You remember last week when uh, news came out that the vast majority of people probably didn't pay attention to it because it had to do with the climate and nobody cares about that. But anyway, that um, one of the northernmost towns in Siberia registered record high temperatures above 100 degrees. And that was scary. Well, turns out that wasn't just a blip that went away. Russia's Forest Fire Aerial Protection Service says forest fires in Siberia have grown nearly fivefold over the past week. So you had really high temperatures, and now you also have a massive increase in forest fires to go along with it. And these are very significant. Um, according to figures reported on Saturday, 2.85 million acres were burning in areas that cannot be reached by firefighters. So that sounds like the sort of thing that is probably going to continue to spread. And these two things I've mentioned are linked. More than 80% of the blazes hit the Republic of Saka, the region where the town of Verhoyansk reported possibly the highest ever temperature above the Arctic Circle. So it is in that same area. You have a drying out and you have the perfect conditions for forest fires. Now, it's not like Russia hasn't been hit by bad forest fires before, even in the past six months or so, but seems like the sort of thing that could get more and more uh, terrible over time. I mean, this summer, and, and it's sad to say that it's this summer, but this summer has been breaking records when it comes to global temperatures. Uh, in the Arctic, they reached 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit? Yeah. I mean, that's insane. It's so, so hot. Um, it shouldn't be that hot. And it, it's very, very concerning considering that we're arguably in a moment where there is a lot less industry and air travel, that there was a little bit of break because of the pandemic. The only silver lining of this awful virus has been that planes have been grounded. People are, you know, staying home. There's less, you know, emissions and CO2 and all that. And now this, I mean, we, we know every summer we hear the same thing. Record breaking, record breaking, record breaking. Like climate change is real. It is absolutely man-made. What are we doing about it drastically? We need to be paying these airlines to ground their planes not to bail out their shareholders yeah yeah it, it, we had that it, it seemed like maybe silver lining um maybe in the end though not not much of a significant one and when you see the you know the, the forest fires and i know that we're we're entering to that period in california too god only knows how that's how bad that's gonna be man those fires in australia feel like a million years ago don't they how devastating <laughs> that was that was like it's like four months ago Five months ago, and it seems like forever ago. But anyway, I wanted to read one other quote. This is from um, Carl Parker, Weather Channel meteorologist, who said, What climate change is doing is moving the distribution of weather events such that historically low-frequency extreme events occur more frequently. Had the climate not changed due to man-made greenhouse gases, the heat we've seen in parts of Siberia would have been a 100,000-year event. And now, like, you don't think we're going to break that record next year? Like, what is that going to mean to a huge region of the world? All the, you know, seaborne ice and all of that. Again, this is not just, it's not just slowly going up over time. There's an acceleration. Yeah. And and I think the pandemic is a perfect test run for how much science needs to be guiding any uh, modern society. Uh I feel like Mayans had their science down better than the Trump administration and the U.S. under it. Mm-hmm. Um but we need, you know, this is a trial run for climate change, which will absolutely leave people without work, without homes, uh, you know, refugees, and and it already has. And it's going to require a radical rethinking of the economy, not because you're socialist, but because you want to survive yeah. and you want there to be future generations to enjoy the planet. Yeah. I mean, I, there's a lot that I don't know about the Mayans, um, but so far as I know... <laughs> While, you know, some of their, you know, scientific uh, stuff would have been pretty rudimentary, hypothetically, they wanted to discover what was true. Trump administration doesn't. They know what they want, and science, unfortunately, might shed light on realities that would make it less likely to happen if people actually paid attention to it. So, no, they take all of the advancement we have, all the technology, all the expertise, and they hide it or they turn it, you know, in the case of the EPA... They turn it against the stated mission of this organization. Ugh. But anyway. I, I also just would lo- never forget, and I always talk about this, but never forget that the Trump administration knows climate change is real. They 
They Their argument for doing away with emission standards on cars is because, and straight up this is in the proposal, it is too late. They know it's too late. They believe that it, I mean, they don't know it's too late. I don't believe it's too late, but that is their, the cynicism that it takes to be a Republican and to be a Trump supporter right now. Don't ever let anyone tell you that they are morally driven or that they are a real Christian because no real Christian or no anyone with a real moral center would be this cynical mm -hmm. about life, about people. Um, so, so that's all done. They know. They know that we're all they, that we're all going to hell in a handbasket. They know the planet's done for. Yeah. They're just not going to do anything about it because they would rather get rich in the short term. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. It's not about like lofty values. It's uh, there's Republicans who want money and know that the government will help them get it, and so they do that. And then there's others who pretend to believe in the American dream and all that, but they know deep down that the system has left them behind, and the Republican Party will give them absolutely nothing. But it does give them racism, and it makes them feel morally superior to other races. And so they get that. Yeah. They get yep. millions if you're a millionaire, and you get lib tears if you're poor and a Republican, and that's about it. That's as deep and as value-based as it is. And then just whiteness unites. Whiteness unites. Unite the white. <laughs> they should have a rally for that. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway. Um, I, okay. I imagine tiki torches and golf carts. Yeah. Very slowly moving tiki torches. <laughs> Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.